At the heart of the crisis in Egypt was this mysterious video made by someone who may or may not be named Sam Basile, who may or may not be Israeli, who may or may not have tricked his crew and dubbed in anti-Muslim propaganda after the movie was done, and who definitely is really terrible at making movies. You watch the clip of this thing online. It is a low-budget, badly acted, completely ridiculous amateur production. It's a joke. A uh, deadly joke. But at the heart of the political furor today is a 99-word statement released by some terrified staffer in the American embassy in Cairo asking for religious beliefs to be respected. Mitt Romney interpreted that statement to be an apology from the Obama administration. An apology for what? I'm not exactly sure. Outreach to the Muslim world is not new, and it's not been a partisan issue. In, in fact, its history is bipartisan, and that history is a very recent history. In 2006, protests across the Middle East broke out over the publication of cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad in European newspapers. While the Bush administration defended the right to publish the caricatures, rightly, it condemned the content. Quote, we find them offensive, and we certainly understand why Muslims would find these images offensive. That was the Bush administration offering its support to the offended protesters. State Department spokesman Sean McCormack elaborating, quote, anti-Muslim images are as unacceptable as anti-Semitic images, as anti-Christian images, or any other religious belief. As the New York Times reported back then, a central tenet of the administration's foreign policy is the promotion of democracy and human rights, including free speech in countries where they are lacking. But a core mission of its public diplomacy is to emphasize respect for Islam in the wake of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In May, 2000, May of 2008, President Bush went beyond just offering support. After an American soldier used a Quran for target practice, President Bush actually apologized to Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki. He uh, apologized for that in the sense that he said that um, we take it very seriously. We were concerned about uh, their reaction. We wanted them to know that the president knew that this was wrong and that uh, the commanders in the field had uh, re publicly reprimanded the soldier and removed him from Iraq. This was always one of the, the most admirable dimensions of the Bush administration and real achievement. After 9-11, it was entirely possible that the country could have lapsed into anti-Muslim sentiment. The Bush administration legitimately fought to keep that from happening, and they largely succeeded. Uh, let's turn to Congressman Keita Elson in Minnesota, who's also the first Muslim member of Congress. Congressman, it's good to have you here tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The, the Bush administration understood the value of diplomacy in, in the Muslim world, and in particular of keeping uh, relations with the Muslim world strong because of possible dangers to America of letting the country fall into anti-Muslim sentiment or letting anti-American sentiment prosper overseas. From your perch in Congress today, is what happened today an aberration, is just part of the campaign, or is that project of the Bush administration's being lost in our politics? Well, I mean, I think that the Bush administration did do a number of things that are commendable. The Bush, President Bush even visited a mosque, had Muslims at uh, the White House, publicly uh, stood up for Muslim civil rights in the wake of 9-11 and said, look, this, this act was done by some despicable criminals, not, not Muslims, and he even referred to Islam as a is a one of the great world religions and so i mean i think that president bush has a, a lot of uh, a lot of credibility there um this other thing that came out uh, is a little bit uh, disturbing um i think it is got to be chalked up to campaign uh rhetoric and uh, and unfortunately uh, hopefully uh, folks will learn from it. I mean, I, I, and here's the reality. Ambassador uh, uh, Chris Stevens is not even buried yet. He has a grieving widow, grieving family, and the other three uh, persons who lost their lives, uh, so two of them haven't even been identified. One has. Uh, uh, and, and to start making partisan play out of this tragedy at this point is uh, insensitive. Going forward, and as you say, it is, a, it is a delicate moment. What needs to be done under either president in terms of outreach to the Muslim world? I mean, it's there, there is a, there is an understandable tension here in the foreign policy where people look at things like this and they they look at these mobs that gather for a YouTube video and they say, how is it our job to placate that? But on the other hand, the, the commander in chief needs to worry about the diplomats and the troops and, and the Americans out in the field. How do you navigate that tension? 
Well, the reality is, is that uh, there were Libyans who were helping to fight and defend the, the, the consulate. I mean, I've been to Libya since the liberation, and uh, the group, the delegation I was with was very well received. I mean, this is a, it is a mob, but it's not representative of Libyan society. Uh, n neither is the mob in, in Egypt uh, representative of Egyptian society. Now, we see this uh, imagery on TV and we think, well, this is the whole country or this is most people. It really isn't. And uh, I think it's important, you know, for us to just acknowledge 